Hello, welcome to the Kylo tutorial video series. I am Jagrut Sharma and this tutorial will show how to configure and run a scoop based injection in Kylo. This is part 3 of configuring and running a scoop based injection. In parts 1 and 2 we covered registering the starter template and doing a full table injection. Now we will look at ingesting a table incrementally on the basis of a last modified time column. A table that gets both new data as well as updates to older data may be a good candidate for this kind of ingestion. All the updated rows can be identified on the basis of the last modified time column. We will do a few checks before configuring and running the feed. We went through these checks in part 2 but I am repeating them here for ease of reference. The first check is the source database table. Let's check out the source table that we want to ingest. In this demo, the source database is MySQL. Here, I am at the MySQL prompt in a database called Finance and we are looking at a table called Purchase Orders that we want to ingest. We note that there are two rows in the table and we also note the last update timestamp column that will be the basis of our incremental ingest. The second check is for the database driver. Scoops lib directory should contain the driver jar file. Let's quickly check if that is available. Here we note that the driver jar is available in scoops lib directory. The third check is for the HDFS landing directory. We want to check that the directory where we want to land the imported data exists and is writable. Here we note that the top level directory scoop import exists. For the sake of this ingestion, we will import data into a subdirectory called purchase order. The fourth check is in NiFi. Here I am at the NiFi screen. We need to ensure that a controller service is available that can provide connection to the source database. We already created this controller service in part 2. Let's quickly verify that the configuration is correct. I click this gear icon, controller services, and MySQL finance scoop connection. This is the controller services that we need. Let's quickly click the I icon and go through the properties. We have the source driver, the source connection string, the username, the password mode, and the password, which is set here as a sensitive value. We also note that it is in the enabled state. One other check to do in Kylo configuration is to ensure that the properties are correctly set. The first property is the database connection password. The format of entry of the property is nifi.service the name of the connection service that we configured in NiFi and dot password equal to the actual password to connect to the database. The second property is the base HDFS landing directory which is configured to be a scoop import. One thing to note here is that this password here is currently being shown in clear text. We can encrypt these passwords using Kylo Kylo provides an ability to encrypt passwords in property files. Do check out another video that provides information on how to enable the encryption. One other check that we need to do in Kylo is to make sure that the driver jar is available in ThinkBig Services lib directory. Here we verify that the driver jar is present in ThinkBig's lib directory. Now let's get back to creating the feed. I go to feeds plus sign select the template that we had imported in part 1 provide a name of the feed feed inc lm purchase orders the system name will be populated automatically Select a category for the feed, provide a description,
choose the scoop connection services from the drop down and this should give us an option to select the controller service that we configured in NiFi. Start typing the names of the tables. It will give you a drop down from which you can select the table that we want to ingest, which is purchase orders. The mode of ingest is incremental. And now we are prompted to provide the column which contains the timestamp on the basis of which to do the incremental ingest. Select that as last update time. Provide a name for the job. Provide a value for the split by field. We will leave the where clause and the target column type mapping fields empty. We can select a compression algorithm. For now, I'm going to just select as none. We can also select a format for the landing data. For now, I'll just keep it as text. And this is the target HDFS directory. By default, this will take the value that we had configured in application.properties. One edit I'll make here is to introduce the subdirectory where we want to land the data. And this is what strategy to apply if the HDFS directory already exists. For now, I'll select as fail import. One thing to note here is that this suffix in the directory will ensure that each time the feed runs, it will write to a unique directory on HDFS. Let's continue to step three. Select the PO ID as the primary key. Continue to step four. We will not change any of the settings here. Continue to step five. We can add a data owner, finance, and let's add a couple of tags, purchases, items, orders, and we set the time for a feed. I'm going to set it to two minutes so that it runs uh, frequently for the purposes of this demo. We want to see at least two runs to verify that incremental ingestion is happening correctly. And let's create the feed. Now we go to Ops Manager and we can see that this feed is actually running. and we can go and go in the step details and it will provide the listing of the different steps that this flow is going through as well as the status of each step as it completes. Let's wait for a few seconds for the incremental ingest to complete and here we see that the first run has completed. Now let's quickly go back to our table and simulate a few rows that get added. Now we see that there are three additional rows that we added to the table. Let's go back to Ops Manager. And we see that this feed, this should kick off shortly and it should ingest the new three rows that we just put into the table. And as we see, the second run of the feed has started. And we will wait for this to complete. And once this completes, we will go and quickly check on HDFS whether the rows were ingested as per the incremental strategy. The job has completed. Now, let's quickly go to HDFS and let us check out this directory. We note that there are two directories underneath it. The first directory should contain the two rows that were existing in the table when the feed first ran. And then the second row should contain the data that was added, that is the three rows.
and here we can verify that one and two the two rows were ingested on the first run of the feed and the next three rows were ingested on the second run of the feed this concludes part three of the series to recap we covered creating and ingesting a feed for incremental table ingestion on the basis of a last modified time column check out part four for creating and running a feed to do incremental table ingestion on the basis of a monotonically increasing numeric column.